now. Slips through on the inside of the John Bow. That took us a little quick. Cars at this stage in the qualifying session. Just thinking, uh, Tony, um, I'm really watching the cars come uh, around. Like any reunion, gathering people is one thing. But when it comes to celebrating 30 years since Nissan took back-to-back -back victories at Bathurst, the star cars had to be part of the show. Championships between 1990 and 92 by Jim Richards and Mark Scaife, as well as the Bathurst wins in 91 and 92 in the all-conquering GTR, are legendary. And so is the guy who headed the charge, Fred Gibson. It was a team. I was very much a team, it's a team effort. And there's no one stands out and no one's equal. I was as equal, we're all as equal. All got to do our job and do our job well. And I think that bonded together very well and, and the team was very successful. To see the cars and the famous nature of what those cars mean to Australian motorsport, but especially to our group, is extraordinary. And, uh, and for Fred in particular, but for Jim Richards and I and plenty of the other drivers, the the cars are a very special part of the history of this sport, and especially, you know, Nissan's involvement in the game. Nothing was too hard, you know, I mean, you, you had guys that could do every job you needed to do. And basically, I think Fred re-engineered, and with the boys, re-engineered the uh, GDR to become Australianised, you might say, so it was a lot stronger and a lot, probably a quicker car than what the Japanese had. For Nissan, the Gibson Motorsport squad was a key part of the brand identity. The fact that uh, the GDRs were run so professionally by Fred through the touring car rounds all around Australia and then the big Bathurst wins were really a lift to the company overall. The Gibson motorsport operation set new standards of professionalism both on and off the track. And that sort of reflects back into the people as well too because they know that if your lead is trying to get the best out of what you, you've got um, and given it everything you've got then I mean everybody sort of rises to the occasion as well. The cars are all owned in private collections these days, including Jim Richards himself, who has his championship winning Skyline from 1990. The cars were underdogs, you might say, but that, that car, the HR31, was probably one of the best, nicest cars I drove. When I say nice, I mean quick. Well, I don't know why they should think that. I mean, crikey, uh, we were, I suppose, the same way as that when we were running the HR31 against the Sierras. I mean, they were virtually unbeatable. But we kept working away very, very hard. The team, like, just virtually never went to sleep to try and make the car a better car, and in the end they did. See the cars and the famous nature of what those cars mean to Australian motorsport, but especially to our group, is extraordinary. And, uh, and for Fred in particular, but for Jim Richards and I and plenty of the other drivers, the, the cars are a very special part of the history of this sport, and especially, you know, Nissan's involvement in the game. Uh, it was a massive move, but, you know, for Fred and Christine to have believed in me so much, um, that was the makings of, of my professional racing career. And what Fred did, not just because of their performance on track, but the way that the place was presented, the level of professionalism for the sponsor of the day, long before, you know, activations and influences, the way that the cars were presented week in, week out was the best, absolutely benchmark. But nothing was too hard, you know, I mean, you, you had guys that could do every job you needed to do. And basically, I think Fred re-engineered, and with the boys, re-engineered the uh, GDR to become Australianised, you might say. So it was a lot stronger and a lot probably a quicker car than what the Japanese had. They were, uh, the cars were underdogs, you might say. But that, that car, the HR31, was probably one of the best, nicest cars I drove. When I say nice, I mean quick. I thought it was good getting youth involved in the team. And, and educate him how I felt they should be driving or doing, and they become champions, both of them did, yeah. And he come along, he was, a, he was great for the team, he was great for the young guys. 
um, and he really helped them an enormous amount of work, you know, to do that. Uh, because you know he was he was a very good driver, and he still still probably is a good driver. You know, you know it, it was a team. It was very much a team. It's a team effort, and there's no one stands out, and no one's equal. I was as equal. We're all as equal. All got to do our job and do our job well. And I think that bonded together very well, and, and the team was very successful. Yeah. No, we knew what he ever wanted. He wanted to have a, a, a team of guys that sort of look good. Uh, the truck looked good, the car looked good, but also you got the results that you were looking for, so performance was the other thing. And, uh, and he was prepared to throw at it whatever he could get to, to achieve that, uh, financially and time and whatever else it was needed sort of thing. And, and uh, yeah, by far he was, uh, he was the leading person as far as the level of, um, I say competitive, but the level of uh, standard went um, as far as sort of presenting a race team. And that sort of reflects back into the people as well too, because they know that if your lead is trying to get the best out of what you, you've got, um, and given it everything you've got, then I mean everybody sort of rises to the occasion as well. So the fact that uh, the GTRs were run so professionally by Fred through the touring car rounds all around Australia, and then the big Bathurst wins were really a lift to the company overall. Thank you, you're a bit young there. <laughs> Look at this right <laughs> <one> here. Drinks. <laughs> uh, I think you can. If you haven't seen it, this is the 1991.